Hey y'all, Irix Guy here, back again for another Time Pieces for Tomorrow. And I uh, got a wristwatch check here. I'm wearing the Rolex Submariner 114060. Now within this video, I want to talk about what is the gray market. What is the gray market for watches? So you've probably heard the term, you know, they there's great deals on the gray market for wristwatches. Have you ever bought a wristwatch on the gray market? Oh man, the gray market... Uh, you know, stay away, don't buy a watch from the gray market. So what is the gray market? And if you found this video, you're probably researching wristwatches. You know, maybe you're looking for a good deal on a, uh, a pre-owned wristwatch. Maybe you're looking for a good deal on a like new wristwatch that you're purchasing from the gray market. So the way that a lot of wristwatches are sold, and I'm talking about a lot of the top manufacturers. You've got Rolex, you've got Omega, you've got Breitling, you've got Patek Philippe, you've got Audemars Piguet, you've got Breguet, the list goes on. But a lot of the wristwatch manufacturers, they're available through what's called an authorized dealer network, often abbreviated as AD, authorized dealer. So if you're purchasing a new wristwatch, it would probably, it, well, it definitely would be in your best interest to visit an authorized dealer. That way you're purchasing from a dealer that is part of the authorized dealer network. You'll get the full warranty that's available. You know, should anything go wrong when you're buying from the authorized dealer, that is a 100% legitimate wristwatch purchase. Now the gray market, and we're going to explain this in, in, a, in a lot of depth here and ask your questions below and I'll be happy to try to post uh, follow-up videos. And also, I've got a lot of live shows, so subscribe to my channel, ring that bell icon, and that'll notify you whenever I post another video or when I go live with, a, uh, with an upcoming uh, Time Pieces for Tomorrow live show. But in the past, and when I say past, I'm talking about the 1980s and 1990s, if you were buying Rolex, for example, if you chose to purchase a Rolex from the gray market, the prices on the gray market were typically radically less than they were if you walked into a Rolex authorized dealer and purchased the same Rolex. Now, the disadvantages to purchasing from the author from the gray market, of course, is that <clears throat> there's there's no you know there's no warranty. You're not purchasing from an authorized dealer. Now, you know the gray market dealer may offer some sort of they may they may offer some sort of unofficial warranty but it's not a situation where you're getting the original manufacturer's warranty, you know, the international warranty. If you're going to get that for Rolex, you need to get it from, uh, you need to purchase it from an authorized dealer. And the same is true for a lot of the big wristwatch brand, brands like Omega, Patek Philippe, the list goes on. So, but in the past, people were attracted to the gray market because you could often go in and spend a fraction of what uh, it would cost in the authorized dealer. I mean, I remember back in the days where the gray market, it was, it was doable to achieve 25, 35 or so percent discount off of MSRP for a lot of wristwatch, you know, not just Rolex, but a lot of other top tier manufacturers as well. But what's happened recently, and I'm gonna keep referencing Rolex because they're, they're kind of the, you know, when you think of wristwatches, they're arguably, it, at least thought of as probably being the number one brand. They, they make a great timepiece, but I'm going to keep referencing them because I want to explain what's happened recently and how it's affected the, uh, the gray market. So the past few years, and, and I'm filming this video, it's 2021, but throughout the past few years, we started to see a lot of the Rolex references, especially the Rolex sports watches on the gray market selling for a lot more than they were in the authorized dealers. And that was linked to that was due to the fact that <clears throat> that a lot of these uh, a lot of these popular references, the Daytona, the Submariners, the uh, you know a lot of the 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 Hulk, the Hulk Submariner, and the and the Batman GMT, and and uh, the Pepsi GMT, and a lot of the really sought after sports watches. A lot of those you couldn't find in the authorized dealers because they were so popular. And whatever the case may be, we'll go into that in separate videos, all the speculation as to why there is a Rolex shortage, why you can walk into most any authorized dealer, and unless you're a VVVVV VIP, you're probably not going to be offered any of the, uh, you know, any of the most popular uh, Rolex sports watches at the authorized dealer. You're probably just going to see a blank counter <laughs> with, you know, with maybe a, 
a couple of Worcester Perpetuals and maybe a couple of date just in it. But so you started to see the and initially you started to see the very popular raw exports, like I just mentioned, start to sell on the gray market for above retail. So that was kind of interesting. And then you started to see the less desirable Rolexes start to sell above retail. And now what you're seeing is pretty much any Rolex reference selling above retail, radically above retail in the gray market. And that's because at least currently the Rolex authorized dealers, they have very limited stock. Again, for whatever reason, comment below. Tell me why you think that Rolex authorized dealers have next to nothing in their cases. Because I remember when I bought, um, when I bought my Samariner 114060 and I got this in the Cayman, in Cayman and uh, walked into the authorized dealer, they had everything. They had, uh, they had the Samariner Date, they had the Samariner Hulk, they had the GMT Batman, they had Daytonas. You know, this was a long time ago when I got this, but that was before whatever factors caused the uh, Rolex shortage to occur to occur. But, you know, now, you know, if you want a specific Rolex sports reference, unless you're on, unless you're in really good, unless, you, unless you've done a lot of business with the authorized dealer, your, your only option is probably going to be to find it on the gray market. Now, personally, I don't, and it's a, it's a choice. Personally, I don't like purchasing wristwatches from the gray market because I like, you know, I like having the, uh, uh, the international warranty that comes from the authorized dealer. And, and again, I mean, it's, it's a matter of personal preference, but you know, if there's really something that you need and, uh, you know, there's a site that I would recommend and you will check out, check out all my videos on timepiecesfortomorrow.com. But if you're, if you're looking for, if you're looking for gray market dealers, now these could be small dealers, these could be larger dealers, you know, something you may want to check is, uh, there's a website that I really like and I rev, I pull it up in a lot of my live shows. It's called chrono24.com. You can pretty much find any brand, any reference, and you can find a variety of dealers, you know, large and small, and you can see a lot of reviews, people that have done business with those dealers and determine if, you know, if it's something that, uh, that you know, you would want to assume the risk of purchasing from the gray market. Now, not all, not all of it is super risky. I mean, there's a lot of um, highly respected, highly respectable gray market dealers that primarily deal with pre-owned. You know, somebody trades in, you know, they get tired of, of wearing a, uh, you know, say a Rolex sports watch and they want to go with something dressier like a date just, or maybe they don't even want to deal with that. Maybe they want something on the leather strap, you know, like a Patek Philippe or something. So they may trade in. So there's a lot of gray, gray market watch dealers that do a lot of uh, pre-owned buy, sell and trade. But with that comes a lot of, um, of, now they can't, you know, it's not like new when you walk into the authorized dealer, it's got all the stickers on it. You know, the authorized dealer would take everything off. Like when I purchased this in the authorized dealer, they took all the stickers off in the authorized dealer before I left with it. And then they size the bracelet and all that. But if you're purchasing from gray market, even if it's in like new condition, it's not going to have all those stickers on it. It's not going to have the tag attached to it. It's not going to have a warranty card. So, you know, there's a lot of things to, and I'm saying it's not going to have the international warranty card say for example Rolex it wouldn't have that in it it you know if that if that gray market dealer offers some sort of in-house warranty you know they may provide something like that but it's not the official uh, Rolex international warranty you know you're only going to get that if you purchase from a Rolex authorized dealer a Rolex AD and again this is the case with a lot of the top tier wristwatch brands so you know there's nothing wrong with the gray market it's not like when you hear gray market it's like oh man that's shady i wouldn't do that yeah, there can be a lot of shady sellers that are part of the gray market. You know, it's not regulated like an authorized dealer network. So, but if you know where to go and, you know, people that dealers and individuals that can be trusted because they've done a significant volume of business and you can talk to the people that actually did business with them and what did they get? You know, obviously the risk with gray market, if you're dealing with you know, it's like if the deal seems too good to be good, if the deal seems too good to be true, the deal is often too good to be true. So if you see a price that, you know, that just seems to be astronomically low 
and there's not a lot of dealer feedback, that could be a risky thing. Because keep in mind, a lot of these wristwatches, even though they may look like new, a lot of them could have been modified internally. And most people that buy a wristwatch, they're not going to take the case back off and examine the movement. You know, there could have been aftermarket parts put into that movement. There could have been aftermarket parts put into the dial. There could have been aftermarket parts put into the bracelet. There's a lot of unknowns. So unless you're a very uh, knowledgeable wristwatch collector, if you're dealing with a gray market dealer that, and your only reason for going with them is, oh, well, it's a good price, then there's a lot of things that you may not have thought about that even if you do get that wristwatch, and it may look 100% legitimate, you know, it may look 100% factory fresh, and you may not even realize that, oh, well, the movement was replaced, or this, that, or the other, and if, you know, in theory, if you decided to sell or trade, say, 10 or 20 years down the road, when you go to that respectable dealer, because there's something else you want, and you say, okay, well, here's, you know, here's my, you know, Rolex or whatever, you know, give me, give me your best uh, price for it, and then they take it apart, and they're like, oh, did you know this has, <laughs> this has a third-party movement or something like that? Then you're going to be, you're going to be, you would have been stuck with something. So in essence, you know, your purchase many years prior from a poorly respected gray market dealer, even though you felt that you were getting what you wanted to get, and even though it lasted great, you know, in this fictitious scenario, you worked for 10 or 20 years, you never knew the difference. But when you, when you wanted to sell or uh, trade, that dealer that really knew his stuff, his or, his or her stuff, they knew that, oh, this was, you know, this was a fake movement. So if the deal's too good to be true, it probably is. So, you know, keep in mind, even the most well-respected gray market dealers, you know, if you're buying, if you're buying pre-owned or you're buying like new, but it's still pre-owned, even the most well-respected dealers, I mean, they could have had, and here's another fictitious example, they could have had a training issue. They could have had a new watchmaker that was hired. And there could have been a super fake that came through that gray market dealer and it was inspected by the, you know, the trainee, the, the, the new watchmaker. And to the best of their knowledge, everything was great, but only the seasoned watchmaker would have been able to spot the difference. Oh, well, that's a fake movement because of this, that, and the other. So, you know, there's even, there's even super fakes that sometimes slip through the best and the most well-respected gray market dealers. So if in doubt, always go to the authorized dealer. And you know, people say you can't get a discount at the authorized dealer. I'll tell you, you can. Now, in the past, and again, I've been in this since the 1980s and the 1990s. In the 80s and the 90s, it was a lot easier to negotiate a uh, super good deal in the authorized dealer. But now, because of the perceived shortage of a lot of core references, references being, you know, models of, of wristwatches, a lot of the core references, the perceived shortage, those authorized dealers know that, you know, why should they offer someone like me a 25 or 30 percent discount when they know that probably within a few hours or a few days, they're probably going to sell that same watch at full retail because of the supply and demand. So it's a lot harder to negotiate really good deals. Now, this isn't the case for all brands, and, and I've, I've centered this commentary around Rolex. There's a lot of brands that are that are really good, but aren't as sought after as Rolex. A great example is Omega. Another great example is Breitling. You know, there's a lot of good deals, even in the authorized dealers, if you know how to negotiate, that can probably be had for both Omega and Breitling. With Rolex, probably not. I mean, unless you've got a very, you know, long-term relationship with that authorized dealer, there's probably not a lot of deals to be had. But I hope this video helped. And again, I'm not trying to scare people, scare people away from the, from the gray market. If you're buying a wristwatch, the gray market can be a great opportunity to get a discount on, on an exceptionally uh, awesome timepiece. You know, maybe something that's discontinued that wouldn't even be in the authorized dealers anymore. But still, you know, in like new or excellent condition, that if you purchase from a respected, uh, respectable rather, uh, gray market dealer, you may come out with something that you really enjoy. So, you know, I hope this video helped. Subscribe, stay tuned, ring that bell icon, and check out all my timepieces for tomorrow videos and my timepieces for tomorrow live shows. Comment below. You got any questions? I'll try to film videos to respond. 
Oh, and check below, and you can see all my timepieces for tomorrow merchandise. I've got stickers, I've got sweatshirts, I've got hoodies, I've got t-shirts, I've got coffee mugs. If you choose to check that out, that really helps to support my channel. Again, I am an independent YouTube channel, and I appreciate your viewership. Y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Captain Irix Guy here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.